It's one thing to pick AM, but to troll your hometown team, it's kind of messed up. We will be in the top five easily this time next year. Hashtag Mario. I mean, I hope so. Obviously, you know, going from 70 to 15 in a month and a half with what two coaches in a possible, like we're talking about, like you have nowhere near full staff. Um, you know, you've already lost T Rob to Alabama. You just lost uh, Brian McClendon back to his alma mater of Georgia this past week. Um, and those are your two ace, ace, ace recruiters. Even though you have good recruiters like Cristobal and Stephen Field, um, and obviously Kevin Smith uh, on this team or on this coaching staff, those are your top two recruiters. You know, and you lose both of them, and you still move forward and you do all this stuff. Um, really, really strong work. Hopefully, we're able to move forward uh, towards the 2023 class. Yes, they're coming in mid-cycle uh, for 23. Uh, I've said this, and I'm a buddy of mine, he texted our group chat, like, oh, Mario's kind of laying the foundation for uh, substandard recruiting next year. But it's a two-year process to recruit the top talent. You lob the offers the first contact day. It's the first Monday of September, their junior year. Excuse me, that's when you can officially contact them. Because there's unofficial contact, and, like, you go to the school, and I'm recruiting the senior, and then, like, this 6'4 junior or sophomore receiver walks by. Coach, who's that? They hear you ask that. You know what I mean? So it's not like, oh, hold on, earmuffs. And then, it, like, you, when you go to recruit these schools, you see the younger talent that's there. You have these young youth camps. You know these guys will come through. You know, Brandon O'Doy in football hotbed. Shout out to him. He's done middle school All-Americans for years. He's had events at the University of Miami campus. You want to tell me that those coaches don't know those guys who are using the IM fields or whatever for this, you know, All-American or this whatever middle school event? They know that, right? So it really is a two-year process for the top talent to be recruited. Mario and staff are coming in at the end of their junior year. So you're talking a full one calendar year. That is mid-cycle for the 2023 class. Agree or don't. It's kind of just the fact of the matter in the world of recruiting. Um, but I do hope for Blaine, oh, to, to agree with Blaine Boy uh, that Miami does develop uh, just that killer instinct on the trail. And Cristobal is able to uh, really just leverage the staff that he builds to really, really, really get this roster going in a more positive direction. If Falconer X says something remotely funny, I'm typically going to chuckle or laugh just because when I look at the uh, profile picture, it's got me about halfway there already. So Falconer X, we appreciate once again for your contribution. The third one of the night. Thank you so much. I think we're at 199, 222, 1111. So there might be some kind of system involved there, but uh, we love it. So thank you, Falconer X. When Miami was good in the late 80s, several players parked their Nissan Maximus with the Texas plates at our fraternity house across the Hecht Athletic Center. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's that's the little frat row there uh, in Miami. So uh, definitely had some fun times partying over there when I was an undergrad. So I know what you mean, man. Um, to Toby Rohrer's point, we're starting Cooper at DT. So what? What are you guessing that, or was that stated? Because I did not hear many, excuse me, excuse me, old habit. I apologize <laughs> if that's in the swear jar. I did not hear Mario say that. And I watched the whole presser, and he was talking about everybody. And if I just click back over real quick here, of course, the website wants to load slowly, but. If I go down here and I scroll and it loads, come on. I'm trying to find the official announcement. Um, offensive lineman. No, the, the official announcement from the University of Miami is offensive lineman uh, in the graphic. So I'm really interested to see where you glean that from, whether that is a hope or that was stated but again from Mario Cristobal and from the official graphic and you know it's a thing like with the MLB draft you grab you draft a player and or the NFL draft even like oh this guy played safety in the league or in college and then the Pittsburgh Steelers announced with the whatever pick you know Mark Rogers outside linebacker and you're like oh hey wait he was a safety at Pittsburgh but we're we're saying he's playing outside backer it's one of those things 
all of everything that I have heard and seen and with my own eyes and from the University of Miami says that Cooper is going to play offensive line. So that's only where I come and question that. If he works, I yeah. – If the only way that I would put him at DT is if we went to like a 30 front. But Chris Ball has said that he wants to play a 40 front uh, base defense. So – because then you could have like that Ashawn Robinson – um, Mount Cody, zero tech, uh, nose tackle guy. Uh, and he could fill that role, but yeah. So I just, I just wonder where you get that from. Cause I don't, I have not seen or heard any of that from anybody 